It's Tuesday, the 11th of July. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel from the Charlotte, North Carolina affiliate office, number one in the country for business, I just learned today. And I can't keep up with the aviation updates fast enough. And we today have a flooding update in Montpelier, Vermont, the Wrightsville Reservoir on the north branch of the Winooski River. You know, it was the Oroville spillway failure that put this channel on the map and we learned a lot about dams and uh, spillway construction and protection, especially with earth-filled dams. Remember, if you ever overtop an earth-filled dam, that dam will fail. Well, this dam is very close to using its emergency spillway for the first time since it was built in 1933. Montpelier, Vermont is located right here at the intersection of the Winooski River and the north branch of the Winooski River and is experiencing heavy flooding right now due to persistent rains which are now finally leaving the area. The north branch of the Winooski River heads up just three miles to the right side reservoir. Now this reservoir was built in 1933 following the devastating floods of 1927 to help prevent flooding downstream in the town of Montpelier. If we zoom in here real close, we've got an earth-filled dam that's about 100, and according to the uh, Corps of Engineers, it's a 115-foot tall earth-filled dam, 1,525 feet long. Here's the outlet structure right here, and it, the water travels down a concrete conduit about 645 feet down to an outlet here and a powerhouse here. But here's the emergency spillway that has yet never been used on this reservoir. So as this reservoir fills up and the they cannot keep up with the releases, this water will pour over this road into this little pond area here into a uh, concrete OG weir. It's about 150 feet long, yeah, 155 foot long concrete OG weir right here. And then pour down in back into the North Fork of the Winooski River. There's a bit of aging concrete structure right along the side here that's going to protect this earth-filled dam from this uh, spillway water. But we've got some footage here from Brandon Clements of uh, Livestorm Media. Let's check it out. So I called Brandon this morning. I've worked with him before on various wildfires in the Orville situation here in Northern California. He said he was in the area and today he fired his drone down this emergency spillway to give you an idea of just the condition of this aging infrastructure here. So here we're looking at this OG weir right here. So he's beyond the part where it spills over the road and into that pool part prior to the OG weir. Let's roll this make this big and roll it forward again. Sorry for the field report here as I'm out of the office. And there's that concrete structure protecting the dam side of the reservoir. And there's the reservoir showed, showing quite full. And then he's got a couple other cl clips of some of the flooding in in the town. So if this thing overtops, it's just going to add more misery to the town below. It's going to allow basically an uncontrolled release of water over this OG weir and add that to the water that's already being released out of the reservoir. It's within about a foot or two of overtopping right now, the first time it's ever done it in, in its history. So like the Oroville Reservoir, they're going to have to see how well does this perform. Is it going to erode or cause any problems? Because again, if it's an earth-filled dam, if that earth-filled dam is undercut, then you've got a major, major problem. But as far as the amount of water overtopping that reservoir with the rains leaving, it doesn't look like it's going to add a, a whole lot of additional water at this time to the already miserable flooding conditions in Montpelier, Vermont. By the way, when I say OG Weir, I'm talking about a concrete structure whose cross section looks like this. It's kind of like the leading edge of a wing where you want the water to flow smoothly over the rounded edge of the weir and then splash up down here at the bottom and head smoothly downstream in a controlled fashion so as to not to undercut the dam beside it. So special thanks to Brandon Clement for getting, getting us this inside view of what that spillway looks like. Support him on uh, Twitter. You see LSM Livestorm Media all the time on the national news. That's what he does. He travels around and catches these 
news stories, weather-related news stories as they happen and sells that content. So thanks so much, Brandon, for letting us use this Twitter feed here. In aviation news, I just got back from Dublin, and a lot of you were asking, did you see anything about that jet bridge that ripped the door off the 787? Well, I got a picture of the 787 sitting on the ramp going to get worked on with the two left door missing after the jet bridge ripped it right off of the airplane. We were parked, it wasn't my airplane, we were parked just a few uh, gates below and it looks like gate 400L and there is the gate that failed. Apparently something hydraulically failed with the gate and it suddenly fell. There were no people, no passengers on board the aircraft or on board the jet bridge when this happened, but something happened suddenly causing this jet bridge to fail and you can see right up in here where that jet bridge caught the door of the 787, ripping it right off of the side of the airplane, which is gonna cause a huge uh, engineering problem for the folks at Boeing and the airline, the American Airlines, to get that thing fixed. Hopefully it just sheared the door off at the hinges and didn't impact the structure of the fuselage. If it got into the fuselage structure, that's gonna be a big job. And here's what a jet bridge looks like when it's attached to the air, airplane. This canvas area, which has got a steel frame in it, is what apparently hooked onto the door when the, when the jet bridge failed, ripping the door off of the hinges. Remember, these jet bridges have an automatic leveling system to them as you board people on the aircraft and the weight of the aircraft continues to grow and the, and the aircraft sinks down onto its uh, landing gear. It'll, it'll, the aircraft will move down slightly, and so the jet bridge will follow it. And if you stand there long enough, you'll feel it go, kurt, 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 and as it keeps level with the aircraft. But something happened in that system, and it failed, and it failed suddenly. So you got to keep your eyes peeled out there on the flight line. And speaking of hazards on the flight line, Sam Chewy reports major damage to an Air Canada Boeing 777 when the dang water truck caught on fire while it was servicing the aircraft and apparently there were a few passengers still on board the aircraft which makes you consider as a pilot your emergency deplaning procedures. How are you going to quickly get people off of the aircraft while you are at the gate? You're not going to do an emergency evacuation. You're not going to pop the slides but how are you going to get them quickly to just leave their stuff behind and head out the gate. This water truck fire caused extensive damage to this 777 and it's gonna be out for a very long time. That sort of damage right there. And there's some more pictures down here, detailed pictures of the damage. That's going to require complete reskinning of that area. Probably a lot of the stringers in that area are going to have to be re replaced. Any wiring or, or other um, infrastructure behind that skin is going to have to be replaced. This is going to be a huge repair job on this Boeing 777. We need more a &P mechanics. We need more engineer types to come fix these airplanes. There's a shortage in aviation all the way around. It's not just pilots, it's everybody involved with aviation. I got a lot more uh, aviation content to review here. A whole rash of accidents, including some ditchings we got to talk about. Thanks so much for your support, especially this from the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.